human circulatory system that is double circulatory pathway in detail okay and what are its composition of the blood that will be studying here okay so the human circulatory system is of two types blood vascular system and the lymphatic system okay blood vascular system has three things heart blood and blood vessels blood has two things plasma and the formed elements blood vessels have arteries veins and capillaries that we have already studied in the first section of my uh, presentation okay and uh, formed elements they are of three types wbc rbc and platelets now the WBC it is again bifurcated into two granulocytes and agranulocytes. Granulocytes is of three types neutrophils, eosinophils, basophils and agranulocytes they are of two types lymphocytes and monocytes. Lymphocyte they are of two types beta lymphocyte and T lymphocyte. students you will be amazed to know about the blood facts approximately 8% of an adult's body weight is made up of blood females have around 4 to 5 liters entirely while males they have around 5 to 6 liters this difference is mainly due to the difference in body size between men and women okay this solely depends upon the size of uh, man and women okay and its mean temperature is around 38 degrees celsius whole blood is about 4.5 to 5.5 times as viscous as air indicating that it is more resistant to flow than water okay and it has pH of about 7.35 to 7.45 that makes it slightly basic okay blood in the arteries is a brighter red then blood in the veins because of the higher level of oxygen is found in arteries because it carries what oxygenated blood okay so the level of oxygen is also high in arteries okay now now comes blood composition of blood of course it has two types I, I told you plasma and the formed elements formed elements they are of three types RBC WBCs and platelets and plasma it is a straw colored and slightly alkaline in nature okay Now the formed elements as I have told you RBC, WBC and platelets okay will be studying all of uh, three in detail. Always note that RBC is also known as red blood corpuscles or red blood cells or erythrocytes and white blood cells is also known as red uh, white blood corpuscles or leukocytes and the platelet is also known as thrombocytes okay now we'll study a uh, red blood cell in detail but before that let me explain you the constituents of plasma plasma uh, it has water which is around 90 to 92 percent present and it uh, acts like a solvent that transports vitamin hormone enzymes and nutrients to the various parts of the body where it is required and then comes plasma proteins plasma proteins are of three types fibrinogen globulins albumins fibrinogen its main function is for the blood coagulation globulin is they act as a antibodies for defense of the body and third is albumin that maintains the osmosis and regulates the blood pressure and then comes glucose amino acid lipids and cholesterol this is for energy growth and growth okay there are also inorganic substances present that regulates the osmosis and uh, such as uh, for example ca2 plus that is calcium ion it is used for the blood clotting and the muscle contraction okay and then comes gases such as o2 co2 n2 etc and they are used for transport always note that 
plasma without clotting factor is called as serum okay that means plasma minus all the clotting factors okay this is known as serum this is serum now comes rbc rbc will be studying in detail an adult male has about 5.1 to 5.8 million rbc's per cubic millimeter of blood and adult female has about 4.3 to 5.2 million per millimeter cube abnormal increase in number of rbc is called polyisthymia whereas decrease in their number are also known as erythrocytopenia okay each rbc is circular or disc shape you can uh, say it that it's like a it's like a donut okay which is biconcave and that has diameter about 7 micrometer and thickness about 2.5 micrometer okay now a question arises uh, what's the life span of rbc so they remain in circulation for about 100 to 120 days the worn out rbcs are destroyed in spleen and liver by phagocytosis okay the spleen is also known as graveyard of rbc okay so uh, rbc it has two main functions to pick up oxygen from the lungs and deliver it to tissue elsewhere okay and to pick up carbon dioxide from other tissue and unload it in lungs okay an erythrocyte is a disc shaped cell which i have already told you that it is a thick with a thick rim and a thin sunken structure okay center is very sunken like and the rim of uh, rbc is very thick okay The plasma membrane of mature RBC has glycoproteins and glycolipids that determines a person blood type okay on its inner surface there are two proteins called as spectrin and actin that gives the membrane resilience and durability okay because of the resilience uh, property it uh, allows RBCs to stretch bend and fold as they squeeze through a small blood vessels okay and then it again comes back to its original shape uh, when it uh, passes through the large vessels so um, because of the glycoproteins and the glycolipids it provides uh and and along with the glycoprotein and glycolipid it has spectrin and actin that provides uh, rbc membrane resilience and durability and for uh, that very reason it can contract or it can squeeze through small blood vessels and to spring and and then it can return back to its original shape as they pass through large vessels okay now features of rbc what are the features of rbc i have told you it has life span of 100 to 120 days and the worn out rbc they are destroyed in the spleen and liver by phagocytosis okay uh, it is red in color due to the presence of hemoglobin okay and it is formed in red, red bone marrow and the structure is biconcave in shape no nucleus no mitochondria is there in rbc okay and what is the function function is oxygen and carbon dioxide transport okay normal hemoglobin level in blood is about 12 to 16 g per 100 ml okay now comes wbc double wbc is also known as leukocytes okay they are also known as leukocytes they can be divided into granulocytes and agranulocytes an average number of leukocytes in a healthy adult ranges from 5000 to 9000 per millimeter cube of blood in acute infection such as pneumonia it increases up to 20000 per millimeter cube this increase in is called as leukocytosis okay the increase in the number of wbc is known as leukocytosis 
and if the number falls below 4000 per millimeter cube it is called as leukocytopenia okay leukocytopenia and this is seen in tuberculosis okay Leuco leukemia is a blood cancer which is characterized by pathological abnormal increase in number of wbcs okay now uh, we'll talk about the lifespan then they are produced in yellow and the red bone marrow lymph nodes spleen tonsils and the pear patches by the process known as leukopoiesis they have a very short lifespan of about just three to four days okay and they are and the dead uh, are wbc's they are destroyed by phagocytosis in blood in blood liver and the lymph nodes okay now uh, as I have told you that they are divided into two granulocytes and a granulocytes granulocytes it consists of neutrophils eosinophils and basophils okay whereas a granulocytes they do not contain granules they consist of lymphocytes and monocytes granulocytes it is of three types as I have told you neutrophils, eosinophils and basophils. First we will be studying neutrophil and eosinophil in detail. So neutrophil these contain very fine cytoplasmic granules that can be seen under a light microscope. Neutrophils they are also known as polymorphonuclear uh, that is PMN because they have a variety of nuclear shapes and that's the reason they play a role in destruction of bacteria and the release of chemicals that kill or inhibit the growth of bacteria okay now comes eosinophils okay what does eosinophil do they produce antitoxins, uh, they phagocytize uh, antigen antibody complex and they show antihistaminic property. Abnormal increase in eosinophils is eosinophilia which occurs in allergic conditions. Okay? They have a large granules and a prominent nucleus that is divided into two lobes. They function in the destruction of allergens and inflammatory uh, chemicals and they release enzymes that disable parasites. Now comes basophil. This is the third category of granulocytes. They have a pale nucleus that is usually hidden by granules. They secrete histamine which increases tissue blood flow via dilating the blood vessels and it also secretes heparin. Heparin is anticoagulant that promotes mobility of other WBCs by preventing clotting. Okay. Now comes a granulocyte that is the another category of WBC. It has lymphocytes and monocytes. See this is monocytes. First we will be studying lymphocytes. Lymphocytes they are usually classified as small, medium or large. Okay. Medium and the large lymphocytes they are generally seen mainly in fibrous connective tissue and only occasionally in the circulation bloodstream. They have a very thin layer of non-granular cytoplasm at the periphery, okay? And the nucleus in lymphocyte is very spherical and large, okay? Lymphocyte, they are non-phagocytic in nature. They, uh, the, the role of uh, lymphocyte is just to produce antibodies and antitoxins, okay? And now comes monocyte. Monocyte in this nucleus is kidney shaped and they have abundant non-granular cytoplasm. They have phago they are phagocytic in function and they engulf bacteria. At the site of infection, they enlarge and differentiate it into macrophages. They also remove damaged tissue and prepare the way for regeneration of damaged part. Hence, they are also known as scavengers, okay? And this is the largest of all formed elements of blood, okay? 
and like lymphocyte they also present antigen to activate other immune cells now the feature of wbc that is leukocyte of course it is colorless uh, life span is uh, normally about uh, 4 to 6 days but uh, it's written that 1 to 15 days it lies in that range count is about 6000 to 8000 8, per millimeter uh, inverse cube and it is found in uh, formed in mar bone marrow lymph glands and spleen it is nucleated of course and the uh, function is uh, that it is forms a part of immune system okay so this is the shape of uh, neutrophile it has th three lobed nucleus this is the eosinophile it is a bilobed nucleus and this is the basophil this this is the monocytes and these are the lymphocytes okay now comes platelets platelets they have uh, they are they are also known as thrombocytes thrombocytes okay they are very minute round and oval in shape that measures about 2.5 micrometer to 5 micrometer in diameter they are without nuclei that possess variety of metabolic enzymes and circular organelles okay it counts around uh, 2 lakh to 3 lakh per cubic millimeter of blood. Now what about their lifespan? They are formed in bone marrow by fragmentation of large cells. They are called as megakaryocytes or giant cells of bone marrow. And its lifespan is about 5 to 10 days. And the formation of platelet is known as thrombopoiesis. Increase in platelet count is called as thrombocytosis, whereas decrease in platelet count is known as thrombocytopenia. Okay. Uh, what are the functions? Function is to secrete vasoconstrictors, which constrict blood vessels that causes vascular spam in broken blood vessels. Uh, that we'll see uh, with diagrams. Okay. Second function that it forms temporary platelet plugs to stop bleeding that will study in blood coagulation okay in detail but for the time being just know that that platelet they form temporary platelet plugs to stop bleeding and platelet they also secrete procoagulants to promote blood clotting and fourth and fifth is that they dissolve blood clots when they are no longer needed in our body okay they digest and they destroy bacteria as we have uh, studied and uh, they secrete chemicals that attract neutrophils and monocytes to the sites of inflammation monocytes and neutrophils okay they uh, attract it to the site of inflammation and the uh, platelet they also secrete growth factors to maintain the lining of blood vessels now these are the features of uh, thrombocytes uh, that it is colorless uh, it is around uh, 7 to 8 days and count is about 1.5 to 3.5 lakhs per millimeter cube megakaryocytes in bone marrow it is formed in and it is non nucleated and it functions in blood clotting okay now this is the types of uh, wbc that is a granulocytes and granulocyte that we have already studied but for the uh, for here just know that uh, a granulocytes are divided into three neutrophils eosinophils and basophils neutrophils uh, uh, function is that they act like a soldier of the body okay and uh, they just phagocytose uh, the uh, foreign antigen and kill it eosinophils they resist infection in our body and it also causes allergic reactions basophils they secrete histamine serotonin and heparin that cause inflammatory re reactions okay a granulocytes they ha are of two types monocytes and lymphocytes monocytes it helps in the phagocytosis of the uh, foreign antigen and lymphocyte they help uh, in the it, or you can say that it is a part of your immune system and it secretes antibodies lymphocytes is of two type beta and the t okay now we'll study blood coagulation 
Blood coagulation uh, within a blood vessel, blood flows freely due to presence of active anticoagulants like heparin and antithrombins. These anticoagulants, they prevent clot formation. Okay, Any injury to the blood vessel leads to its rupture which causes bleeding. The conversion of the liquid blood into the semi-solid jelly-like structure which, is, which we call it as a clotting. Okay. It is a mechanism of hemostasis that prevents blood loss through injuries. Okay. Uh, so, coagulation, what happens in coagulation is that uh, this is the last and the most effective defense against bleeding. During bleeding, it is important for the blood to clot quickly to minimize blood loss but it is equally important for blood not to clot in undamaged vessels. It is a very complex process um, which aims to clot the blood at appropriate amount and the objective of the coagulation is to convert plasma protein fibrinogen to fibrin which is a sticky protein that adheres to the wall of vessels. Okay. And what, uh, what later happens is blood vessel and the platelets, they become stuck to fibrin and the resulting mass, it helps to seal the break in the blood vessels. And the forming of fibrin is what makes coagulation so complicated. Okay. This is what happens in the blood coagulation or the process of clot formation. When a blood uh, vessel gets ruptured uh, or at the site of uh, injury, smooth muscles present in the vessel walls, they contract and cause the vessels to constrict. Platelets and the injured tissue release thromboplastin, which initiates the formation of enzyme prothrombinase in the blood. This enzyme along with the Ca2 plus converts inactive plasma protein which we call it as a prothrombin into active form thrombin. Okay. And uh, thrombin further catalyzes cat uh, conversion of soluble fibrinogen into insoluble fibrin. And the fibrin fibers, they enmash or they entangle platelets, blood cells and the plasma to form the clot. Entire process of clot formation, it requires around 2 to 8 minutes just.